And I never thought for one second that was the last time I would ever talk with her and say goodbye. This is the grieving mother of 35-year-old Jeannie Childs, a woman murdered in her apartment in South Minneapolis. And this cold-blooded killer is 56-year-old Jerry Westrom. This murder case was solved after nearly two decades because of one piece of evidence that put him on the scene, a used napkin. In this video, we're taking you through the interrogation of Jerry Westrom and how a used napkin became his reckoning. In 1993, Jeannie Ann Childs lived in Horns Tower in South Minneapolis when she was found stabbed to death. The investigators found a very messy apartment filled with bloody footprints, DNA samples, and even semen on a bloody comforter. The killer's DNA was everywhere. The towel, the washcloth, the t-shirt, everywhere. The problem was that it was 1993 and there was no hit in the database. The case stayed cold for 26 years, until the investigators found a hit on the genealogy website, linking the DNA to the Westrom family, and they narrowed it down to Jerry Westrom, an Asante businessman. But since it was a genealogy match, not a direct DNA match, the investigators needed his DNA sample. The investigators followed Westrom to a hockey game, where Westrom used a napkin and threw it in the trash. That one napkin connected him to the stabbing and the running around inside the bloody apartment, and placed him perfectly on the scene of the crime. So in 2019, Westrom was brought in for interrogation to see whether he had some answers for the crime that happened 26 years ago. Probably wondering what all this is about, I assume, or do you have any idea? I have no idea. Well, let's see if we can clear it up. You know, a lot of times, Jerry, we were not, I've had a lot of cases down here, and people come down and they will say, hey, you know, uh, this is a situation, whatever, okay? Um, now, <laughs> this, here's the thing. We are looking at a case that happened many years ago. Okay, and your names come up in it. And sometimes there's a reasonable explanation why that is, and sometimes there's not. So we just want to talk to you a little bit about that. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever been read your, your Miranda warning before? Yes. Okay. And did you understand it last time you read it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to read it to you again, okay? Uh, Jerry, you have, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer now and have a lawyer present now at any time during questioning. You can have a court lawyer, want to be appointed for Del Cops. Can you understand those rights? Yep. All right, we want to talk to you about something. Chris, on my desk, I have that folder. Can you grab it? Sure. Do you want me to grab it? I'll get it. Jerry, uh, would you like anything to drink? No, thanks. Yeah. And just take a second here and relax. Have you ever been down, sit down to this area? Um, well, yeah, down to Minneapolis. Been, have you ever been to this room, City Hall? Um, not for the exact room, no. Okay. Do you need anything? Do you need a new bathroom or anything to drink? No. Or do you want some water or anything like that? No. Okay. All right, Jerry. Um, so, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of this area in Minneapolis, see if you've ever been there. And just to let you know, a lot of times these cases, they have, um, a lot of people come up there. Sometimes they, sometimes we don't have, uh, we, we learn something in these interviews, okay? The detectives need Westrom to talk voluntarily so that they can gather more evidence against him. At the same time, they don't want to spook him by telling him that he's a criminal. Because even though they have Westrom tied to the scene because of the DNA match, the detectives need more to build a proper case against him. Are you familiar with these buildings here, uh, they're in South Minneapolis. They're called the Horn Towers. No. Okay. Let me show you a different picture of these. Okay. You're familiar with those? Um, have you looked, are you familiar with Lake Street? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where the Kmart is on Lake Street? Yeah. Okay. So if you look at this map here, you'll see that you have uh, Kmart is right here. Okay. And then um, these are where these three buildings are, the Horn Towers. So Kmart's right here. This is Blaisdell. This is 31st. This is Pillsbury. And these are three tall buildings. And they're called the Horn Towers. People that people from out of Minneapolis may not know them as the Horn Towers, but 
Does, does, does this look familiar to you at all? Have you ever been in those buildings? Do you Not to remember. No. Okay. At this point, if you look at the case from an expert criminal perspective, he should have said that he had been there, not because he wanted to incriminate himself, but because he could say he dated her or had been at her apartment. This lie would have explained the DNA found at the crime scene, but because he denied ever being there, he's already messed up. Let me ask you this. In 1993, okay, um, were you, did you ever date anyone in Minneapolis? No. Okay. Did you ever, and, and I'm sorry, I have to ask you this question, okay? I'm not trying to embarrass you. Did you ever have sex with a female in Minneapolis in 93 that you remember? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, okay. Does this lady look familiar to you at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, her name is Jeannie Childs. Okay. And she was also known as Jennifer. And so she is a, um, a person that lived in these buildings in 1993. Okay. And she was found in her building in her apartment deceased. Do you know anything about that at all? No. Okay. Do, you, do you think you would have ever had sex with her? I doubt it. No. Okay. I mean, in, in 93, did you, um, and I'm not trying to embarrass you, but did you visit prostitutes at all? Not sort of. Um, that's here I met my wife. Okay. I'm not, I don't, but I'm in, besides your wife, in 93, would you have been with a prostitute? No, no. Okay, would you have sex with another woman in 1993 other than your wife? Yes. Okay. Um, do you, without, I'm not asking their names, but do you remember the people that you had sex with in 1993? Um, no. I mean, I thought I'm mad, no. Okay. But did any of the women live in Minneapolis? Uh, no. Okay. Huh, this guy's a no-no machine. Like, all he's doing is giving one-word no answers. He's not elaborating. He's not even countering the answers with a longer explanation. You know what that means. He's smart enough to know his rights and knows that anything he says can be used against him. That's a smart man. But if he was really smart, he'd call for a lawyer in the beginning. But then we wouldn't have a video to watch, would we? And, 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 do you remember where you were living in 1993? Um, then Apple Valley. Okay. Does Egan sound right? Would you have lived in Egan in 93? Um, could, I mean, could have been. So, the reason that we're, we're, we're wanting to talk to you, I'm sorry, do you remember, yeah. do, does the phone number 612-621-8451 mean anything to you? Okay. All right. The reason that we're talking to you is she was found deceased in her in her apartment, okay? And we, we think that you were inside that apartment. Would that be any reason for that at all to happen, you think? I have no. Okay. All right. Um Okay, so now this is a long time ago. Are you sure on those answers? I uh, I I haven't. Yeah, I. Okay. <clears throat> so, part of what happened with this case, Jerry, is the investigators, what they did is they went through and they processed it. And as you can imagine, and I'm sure you're aware of, things are collected and then they're looked at for forever, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in this case. And so, I just want to show you just some stuff, nothing gory. Um, but here's a here's a bedspread. It's got a lot of red stuff on it. It's blood. Okay. Would, would there be any reason why your DNA would be on there? What about um, what size shoe do you wear? Ten and a half, eleven. About and a half. Okay. So these, these feet print there in the blood, if, would those, any reason why those would be your feet print? No. Okay. So you see this towel here with the blood on it? Mm -hmm. Would there any, be any reason why your DNA would be on that towel? No. 
So you see this shirt and that washcloth? Okay, so this shirt is um got a little bit of blood on it, and then this has got some blood on it. Would there be any reason why your DNA would be on those two items? No. Okay. What about this sink here? Would it, in this back area here, I see all this blood. Would there be any reason why your DNA would be in that blood there? No. So now the only evidence they had is placed right in front of him. And all he has to say is... No. 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 But then again, in his mind, he could be thinking that the officers are lying to him, which they're allowed to do. But he's definitely not allowed to lie, especially in such a gruesome murder case. Okay. Does it shock you to know your DNA is there? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Back then, 93, did you drink? Were you a drinker? Yeah. Um, could there have been a time in your life where you drank and maybe don't remember things? It happened every once in a while. Okay. But, I mean, because we're talking, I mean, let's try to figure this out here, because, because, do you remember us at all? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because this is, so what happened with this case here, this lady was, was killed, and these are the things that everyone looked at. And then, you know, we started looking at this case three, four years ago and just kind of processed it and, and did whatever. And your DNA is at every one of these locations that we talked about just seconds, a second ago. And I was kind of wondering, you know, do you, do, do you have any idea why that would be? No. Okay. Uh, here's how I need you to, to understand this. A lot of times people come down here, okay? I mean, by the time that we work on cases, it has always been many years, and it is hard for people to get over the hurdle of kind of explaining things away. It's real important that if you remember anything here, to share that with us, because we want to make sure that if something happened in this apartment that you need us to know that we know, okay? Because there has got to be an explanation why scientifically you're there, okay? It can't be a coincidence. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of times things have happened where people say, hey, all of a sudden something happened, or there's here, let me tell you what you don't know, or things along those lines. And I think it'd be a good idea for you to kind of get out in front of this a little bit and just kind of say, hey, hold on a second, guys. Let me, let me, let me tell you some parts that you don't know about this story. You know, science can tell us that, that the person that that is at all these locations um, was there when this happened and participated in it. But there's the things that the person that was there can fill in gaps too. And that, that's, what we're, that's what we're asking you for, are those, those gaps. Now, do you know we have your DNA? I assume so. Okay. So is there any, can you think of anything? Man, this has been a long time ago. This is a pretty significant event. Would you agree? I mean, the person involved. In, yeah, the person involved in this is going to remember, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's kind of what we're we're wondering if you have any of that kind of knowledge. So after knowing everything, the interrogation ended and the arrest began. In Westrom's trial, there was a box of evidence presented in court, but the most prominent and most useful link was the napkin. The prosecutors revealed that Westrom stabbed her 65 times, chased her around the apartment as she bled, and <clears throat> used her. In 2022, Jerry Westrom was found guilty of first-degree premeditated murder and second-degree intentional murder, and was sentenced to life in prison.